controversial subjects that come up in my medical education he, as a racially charged statement, uh, the kind that was used to justify slavery in the United States. Race is incorrectly taught and used in medicine. I am worried that medicine and medical science are blinded by racism. Hey, my name is Connor Lenahan and I'm a second year medical student. I've been struggling throughout my time in medical school to reconcile my understanding of race and racism, especially as it relates to health equity. As a way to process and record my journey of understanding this material, I'm going to start a video series discussing the controversial subjects that come up in my medical education. This is documentation of my personal journey in an attempt to reach a better understanding of how to provide truly equitable medical care. This episode will focus on racial discrimination in the diagnosis and treatment of kidney disease. Uh, I'm going to start briefly by explaining the basics of how kidney function is measured in patients because that measurement is how I believe uh, care is racialized. All that matters for this discussion is that uh, a molecule called creatinine is used to measure kidney function and it is produced by our bodies as a breakdown product from muscle activity. Uh, that means it's at a pretty constant level in our blood all the time because as it's produced, it's filtered out by the kidneys at a relatively constant rate. Uh, if the kidneys are damaged or if they're not working properly, creatinine will build up in our blood and uh, lead to a higher measured creatinine level. Uh, that concept was easy to understand and accept for me and it implies that baseline creatinine is directly related to a patient's muscle mass. Uh, as a way to give some examples of nor normal variations in muscle mass, uh, my professor stated that women might have lower creatinine levels than men and that athletes or bodybuilders might have higher levels than less active patients. Uh, they also claimed African Americans have higher creatinine levels specifically because of a higher muscle mass than other racial groups. Uh, at this point, I was confused. Um, the other examples were obvious physiological markers, uh, but this stood out as being a social determinant of a biological phenomenon, so I had some questions. My real question was, why did this professor claim that African Americans have higher creatinine levels? She stated that African Americans have a higher muscle mass relative to other racial groups. Uh, keep in mind that creatinine is directly related to muscle mass. Uh, this immediately stood out to me as a racially charged statement, uh, the kind that was used to justify slavery in the United States and continues to be perpetuated through stereotypes. The difference this time was that I was in class and my professor had given me this explanation as a part of the crucial medical science that I need to graduate. None of my classmates said anything about it in my small group session either, so I decided to do some internet research and ask for more guidance by email. In conjunction with several of my classmates, I found out that medical schools are starting to remove the factor of race uh, in calculations of kidney function. The reason for this is because they realize that race is incorrectly taught and used in medicine. While it might not be explicitly referred to in this way, race is taught as if it is a biological risk factor for disease when the reality is that race is a social construct. Uh, this has been more recently acknowledged by the two largest nephrology groups in the nation, the National Kidney Foundation and the American Society of Nephrology. It is essential to differentiate between race as a biological factor and as a social construct because failing to do so can lead to a fundamental misunderstanding of disease cause and prevention. For example, Africa is the second largest continent in the world in both land size and human population. The genetic diversity among the peoples of Africa is enormous. The scientists who study the human genome have said that even among Africa and Europe, for example, there is not a single absolute genetic difference, meaning no single variant where all Africans have one variant and all Europeans another one, even when recent migration is disregarded. Therefore, a physician who assumes that there is a different biological or genetic risk for disease based on a patient being of African versus European descent would be oversimplifying the enormous genetic diversity contained in each group. It also fails to acknowledge the real way 
that social factors influence who has access to care and what kind of care they receive. However, my professors consistently denied that they misused the term race and have actually reinforced the notion that the races are genetically distinct. This has resurfaced in every organ system module that we've studied since then in some way or another. I'll be going into more detail about those examples in future videos, so make sure you subscribe if you're interested in learning more. This leads me to my current understanding, uh, which is that calculations used to assess kidney function are actively harming black U.S. Americans. I say this for several reasons. It is well documented that black U.S. Americans are significantly more likely to suffer from end-stage kidney failure than white U.S. Americans and other racial groups in the United States. Additionally, the math used to calculate kidney function uses a corrective factor that assumes that all black U.S. Americans are producing higher baseline creatinine levels due to an assumed higher muscle mass. This calculation means that if both a black U.S. American and a white U.S. American of the same weight, height, age, and sex had the same moderately high creatinine score, the black U.S. American would be assumed to have better kidney function than the white U.S. American and would be less likely to be diagnosed with renal disease or to receive treatment for renal disease as a result. Based on this understanding, it is hard for me as a medical student to understand why these calculations are still used and why doctors and the medical system insist on continuing to use race as if it were a biological risk factor for disease instead of searching for a more meaningful commonality that could shed light onto the different incidents of certain diseases. In other words, I am worried that medicine and medical science are blinded by racism and unable to look past the social structure of our society to learn how to correctly interpret social determinants of health instead of relying on outdated and racialized genetic risk factors. That's been my journey so far. Thanks for staying with me until the end. Let's continue the conversation in the comments.